Miles, can you hear me? Miles. Okay. Good evening, all. Uh, sorry for starting uh, late beyond the scheduled time. So today we shall be talking about um, where we, we, are, we are going to continue from where we stopped last time when we talk about the uh, final adjustment or adjustment of final account. So uh, we said that the major adjustment done on the account uh, at the end of the uh, preparing the trial balance, the first trial balance, uh, the uh, depreciation, the bad debt and DAFO debt, and also accrual and prepayment. Uh, these are the uh, three major adjustments that have been done on the final account before it can be presented and referred to a uh, uh, financial statement. So, Last uh, last class, we talked about IS 16, which talked about non current assets. And inside that, we're able also to trace down to the depreciation. And we look at how to account for it and how to calculate the depreciation. And I gave an, ass an assignment on that. And I believe that uh, you have solved it. And the solution has actually be what? And actually, you are okay with it. Since I have no question from that. And I swear, I also asked, but. We are no response means that everything is clear. But I'm telling you this that it's possible that your exam might actually take place in July. So, and that's what we did in last class is one of the key areas that you need to know. It's very, very important for you to know it. So, today we continue from where we stopped and we are going to look at the bad debt, uh, provision for bad debt, and also accruals and prepayment. These are the things that we are going to look today and we are going to try as much as possible to understand, look at the meanings and how it has been done in the account, in final, final account, how we account for it in the final account. 
So without wasting too much of our time, let's go. So firstly, we'll be starting with bad debt, uh, provision for bad debt and DAFO debt. So uh, before we move into calculation, there are actually what well, we have three types of what debtors. We have the good debtors, we have the DAFO debtors, and we have the bad debtors. There are the three types of debtors that you have. And you know, in our organi organization, organization we prefer to make sales on cash. They make sales and they collect their cash. But in the real world, most organizations, especially those that they are competitors, render credit services to their uh, render credit services to their customer. It means that the other what you yourself must be forced to render credit service to your customer or less to be forced out of the business. For example, there are some industry that are very from permanent to uh, permanent to credit facility. For uh, pharmaceutical is one of them. My most of goods are being given to them on credit and when they make sales, they pay back. So if we are in, in such industry and you refuse to give credit, it means that many cost your customer will patronize other vendors so that they can get what they need to get at what at a reasonable credit terms. So the reason why it leads to what uh, debtors is actually as a result of making uh, selling goods on credit. So assuming there is no uh, selling goods on credit, and it means that there will not be what there will not be anything called debtors. Also, far you are trading and you sell goods on credit, there is what we call debtors. Now these debtors, they are people people that are. Uh, now ready, people that are ready to pay back when it's due, they have the financial capacity and they are ready and willing to pay back when it's due. Those sites of people are regarded as good debtors. The reason why we credit as good debtors is because that when it's due for maturity date or before the date, they make payment. So business goes as usual. And another reason also why the uh, we have another point of contact that we need to know about good debtors is that there is what there is 100 percent assurance that the money that what they are the money the collecting the collectible money will be collected 100 percent it has for good debtors is what there's assurance that the total amount of money that is expected from there will be what will be collected but we now have another type of debtors we call them doubtful debtors doubtful debtors are those that are willing but not able to pay these are people that are what they might what are willing and not able to pay, or more they might want to pay and not willing. So it without they are doubtful. So you as a company, you are not sure if they are going to pay or not. So you are looking at okay, well, what can you do? This um customer A, customer B is owing me a so 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 amount. So what is it that is it going to pay me based on track record, based on your findings and the rest? You're able to work classify such debtors. Is that to be what good debtors or doubtful debtors? That that's debtor is what is 50-50. It means can can pay me or it might not pay me or it pay it 80 percent and not pay the hundred. It means twenty percent. That's why they, they are doubtful. So and we have another one who are what the bad debtors. These are the debtors that are what they are willing to pay. They are actually what they have no desire to pay, and also it means that the amount of money that they are owing you is actually very close to uh zero loss as very close to that all loss as 100 percent loss rather it's very close to 100 percent loss it means that you will not be able to work to recover your due amount of money the amount of money that is due to you so a bad debt an example the reason why you can have bad debt is as a result probably the customer purchased the good and because of economy you could not sell the goods on time so you sold it, you sold it at a loss and unable to pay back the money and that bankruptcy um insolvency mismanagement distrust or uh, disputes probably you and your customer have some issues or, or are agreeing on a balance and such disputes might not award my my query the uh, debtors not to pay back the money now the accounting system it says that what well, they know we're not talking about prudency concept that means that okay fine if you are carrying this amount of your uh let's say your debtors you have like 10 million in your record, are you sure that that 10 million will actually be collected? 
Because if you are, well, what you are saying is that you are increasing your profit because you have assumed that you make sales. Because your sales or your revenue is a uh, addition of cash and credit sales. So it means that your profits have increased. But at the end of the year, are you actually sure that you're going to collect all that revenue? If you are sure that you're going to collect all that revenue, fine. But I can't please now say that, okay, fine. Make provision for it. Provision for what? For your doubtful debt. Doubtful debt that you do that, okay, if you give it, uh, based on your experience with the customer or based on the economy, is probability that what? That this customer will pay you is 80%. So which means you are doubting 20%. So you need to account for that 20% and expense it to reduce your receivables at the same time to reduce your profits. So now let's move to accounting treatment of bad debt. I believe the explanation of that is very clear. Please, as we are going on further, I will be explaining a lot. So before we actually get to the calculation aspect or the treatment, is actually very important for you to understand the terminology so that you understand why we are debiting or crediting some ledger. So the accounting treatment for bad debt. Bad debts are to be written off the relevant what debt source account. You know, I think uh, last week when we had class, I told you that we have what we call a uh, trade receivable control account. And we have individual receivable control, uh, individual, individual receivables account. I said the control account is a summary of all the individual receivables accounts. And this, uh, the control account balance is what you normally see on the statement of your financial position. So now bad debt means that any customer that you now look at, okay, if customer Z that is not going to pay you back your money, then you need to what, reduce your receivables and reduce your profit so that you can show that, what, that this amount, this person, will not pay you back and it will be accounted for in your books of rec or your work in your books. So there are the, so the uh the treatment for bad debt is actually what you debit uh you credit the treatment is that what you credit your trade receivables account. Now trade receivables account is an asset account. So to reduce it you credit it then you now move to your expense account, you debit it, which means you are increasing your expenses so that you can reduce your what, your profits. So you debit your expense account, which is bad debt account, then you credit your trade receivable account, which is current asset account. This is what this is the treatment for bad debt. Now, is what you have what you have done is that you have removed the, the receivables that you are that you thought you'll be able to collect in the future in the fisheries period, but at the end of the year you realize that due to economy or some reasons, that amount of money cannot be collected again. So you have reduced your trade receivables account. And also you have reduced your net profit by increasing your expenses. Now, if that is the case, what if at the end of the day, after a year or two years, the person now pays you the money, the customer, you have written it off already, but the customer now pays you. Now it means that two accounts actually work. Is that there are two ways in which we are, uh, treat that. There are two ways in which we treat that. The first one is that when the customer pays, the bank receives. So you debit the bank account because the bank is receiving, and you credit, you open, a, you open a, an account, then you call it bad debt recovered account. Then you credit it. That account is what we got our gain account. It will be on the credit side of your statement of profit or loss account because it's a gain. Because you are what well, it's most of you have written of what you are collecting back. So that is the first method. You debit your cash account or your bank account, then you what you credit your bad debt recoverable account. And I said that account will be a what it will be a revenue account because it will be a gain. Now another way in which you do it is that you debit your cash account and you credit your bar your bad debt account. So the reason why you are crediting your bad debt account is that you are using the amount that you have recovered to reduce the bad debt of that year. You know, we are talking about your yearly uh, adjustment. It can be on the monthly adjustment, it can be on the yearly adjustment, like I explained when we are doing uh, depreciation. So there are two, two methods for us. When you recover your bad debt, you do either, you the de uh, first one is you debit your cash account and you credit your bad debt recovery account. 
But if you don't want to go with that, based on the policy of the management, you can what, debit your cash account and credit your bad, uh, bad debt account. These are the two ways in which you work. You account for bad debt within of what yet recovered. Now, like I said earlier, before because you are not sure if the customer will pay or not. So you are in the 50-50 that your customer might pay the amount of money that is due to you, or they might not pay such amount of money. Or if they pay, they will not pay 100%. Given the scenarios that have happened, probably you notice that the bank, the customer, there's fire incidents happening in the customer, or there's what called uh, law enforcement uh, is suit, is suit actually against them, a lawsuit against them. These are the reasons why you can, okay, given it that if this is not recovered, if it's not resolved, it's probable that the customer will not pay you your money. Or if it's resolved on time, it's possible that your customer can only pay you 80% of the money, but you are not sure. So far you are not sure, then the standard says that you want to make provision. It gives room to make provision. To make provision means that it's actually follow a what? It's what we call the uh, contingency concept. It means that what? You make provision, put concept, that you make provision for all losses. Even though you have not incurred the loss, you, will, you make provision for the loss. But you are certain no what? You are certain no revenue. If you have not made any revenue, you are not going to ascertain, you are not going to assume that you have made revenue. But it allows you to what? To raise a provision for your loss or expenses. Now, if that is the case, then provision for bad debt and doubtful debt is one that what is one that help us to address that. And this is actually what the account is is what it has what we call balance carry down. It has what we call balance carry down, and it is used to reduce trade receivables control accounts. It's used to reduce trade uh, trade receivable control accounts, and the figure is displayed under the statement of financial position. It is not net off from the trade receivable account ledger, but it is displayed as what as, a, as, a, as an item under statement of financial position. Now, if that's the case, we have let for, for what the accounting procedure, we are accounting treatment for provision for bad debt or doubtful debt. The first one is if it's the first time you are making provision for it, then the e treatment is what? You debit your profit or loss account and you credit your provision. Is a credit item at, uh, ledger. So you credit your provision or for your provision for bad and doubtful debt. And then giving to is, is allowance or bad debt. Allowance. So if you see allowance, please, it's the same thing as what? Well, provision for bad debt or doubtful debt. These are, the, these are the two names that have been known to it, provisions or allowance. So the first one, like I said, that if it's applying the first time, what you do is that you, uh, this, what you do is that you debit your profit or loss account and you credit your what, your provision account. Another way in which you can do is this, you can actually what, if you don't want to have uh, a list of uh, too much of a ledger, your financial statement, like having bad debt, then having provision for bad debt. You can actually add the two together, which means you now have what? Bad debt and that full debt. So if you have that, if you have that ledger in your account, what you are going to do is you are going to debit that ledger and credit provision account. So it means that, is so I know, like I said earlier, that the balance for the bad debt is written off to profit or loss account statement. The balance is written off to what? To profit or loss account. But why the balance for provision for bad debt is not written off, it's carried over. It's carried over. So it's actually what? It's an, like a liability that was like carried over, the provision that be what are being carried over. Then subsequent year, you know, we have not initial. Now, subsequent year, it's possible. That you have two scenarios, you can only have two scenarios on that. It can be either, it can either increase or decrease. For example, let's say in 2018, you make a provision that is 20,000, that your provision is 20,000. But in 2019, due to economy and everything, you now notice that, that 20, 20, your provision for 2019 will now be 15,000. It means that what your provision has reduced. 
it means your provision of what have reduced, then you need to account for that. Because it's that 50,000 that you're going to use to reduce your trade receivable control account balance. So you need to reduce it. Then how do you reduce it? The way you reduce it is by what? Is by debiting your provision account. This I have it. Okay, let's see. It. Okay. If it's reduced, what do you do? You debit your provision account to reduce it. Then you credit your what? Your profit or loss account or bad, uh, bad debt and doubtful debt account. So is it that you what? You credit your profit or loss account or you credit your bad debt or doubtful debt account. Then if it increases, it means that you need to add it to it. You know, the initial item, the, the initial one is we credit the provision account. So if we are increasing it, then it means that we need to credit the same account so that the figure can increase. So that is why it works. Whenever it provision increases, you debit your profit or loss and you credit your what your provision account. Your provision account. These are the what these are the two items that we have here. Then we also have what we call the phone discount allowable. Now discount allowable is actually what you might not see it in your different there are some textbooks if you check it you will not see this yet but for complete knowledge i'm introducing this now discount allowable discount allowable like i said is part of cash discount that is given to what they are given to the customer to enable them or to encourage them to pay on time so our provision as well is that at the end of the year if you give your customer 12 uh, let's say a month to pay back and whenever you pay back in that one month the person will be entitled to discount to discount then at the end of the purchase process uh, you are closing your financial statement let's say you are closing your financial statement 31st december of every year and the customer purchased the item on the 28th of december you know 28th of december we cross across to the next year for one month it means that if the customer pays within the period of january 1st to January 27, that customer is entitled to what? To discount. So as an accountant, given that, that you know the particular customer will always take advantage of your discount, then you can make provision for such. By what? The provision, what call provision for discount allowable because you know that this customer will surely take advantage of what? Of the cash discount that will be given to him or her. And before you can calculate your discount allowable, you must have removed bad debts. You, know, you, are, you must have reduced your trade receivable control account by what? By deducting the bad debt from it and provision of that full debt before you can now find percentage of the balance so that you can that will not give you your what? Your discount allow. I will repeat myself. Band, uh, bad debt, that are the first charges against trade receivable accounts. Provision for that food debt. It, it, it is the net value of trade receivable control account minus bad debt. That figure is what we are going to use to what? So you are going to find percentage on it, or if they give us figure to reduce it further. Now, to get our discount allowable, our discount allowable, before we can use percentage of that provision given to us, we need to remove bad debt and provision for that food debt away from the trade receivables control account. It is the net balance after deducting the bad debt and the provision for that food debt away from the uh, trade receivable control account that we are going to use to charge to give us discount, provision for discount allowable. Okay. So I believe you understand that. So let's look at the uh, let's look at an illustration to explain that further. Now, if you notice it, we are splitting the uh, this uh, adjustment one after taking it after after the other. The reason is that in the exam mode, they can ask you in an objective OBJ. So actually, what they give you is short scenario, and they ask you to do the to pass the treatment, the accounting treatment, or the other with the one of the ways that you can also see it is you can see it as additional information you can be required to prepare financial statement and that financial statement will now comprise of statement of profit or loss account or statement of financial position with additional information 
and these are the item of your initial information that you are you can encounter in your examination now let's look at exercise one for bad debt the following information has been extracted from the books of adams limited on 4th april 2018 the provision for discount allowed was 5830 you know i told you that discount allow this uh, provision for discount allow provision for bad debt or that debt have what we call balance carry down it has balance carried down so it's always our opening balance if it's not the initial entry then but bad debt is written off to profit and profit or loss account bad debt discount allow they are written off to profit or loss account so let's continue the question the provision for discount allowed was 5830 that's the opening balance and the provision for bad debt was 2000 234 naira. That's also opening balance. Discount allowed during the year to 31st March 19 was 18,824. That's what I had the discount allowed. And bad debts eating off was 4,832 naira. On 31st March, the 219 debtors amounted to for 425,052 naira. The provision for bad debt is to be based upon a specific provision or what? 5,052 naira. And a general provision on the remainder at what? 1%. The provision for discount allow is to be what? 2% you are required to prepare one bad debt account two provision for bad debt account three discount allowed account four provision for discount allowed account five treatment of financial position extra as of 31st march 2019 so we are expected to what to prepare these five ledger. So let's start. The first thing you are going to do is whenever they give you, whenever they give you opening balance, the first thing is that you need to take the opening balance to the respective account and post it there. And from there, you can what you can now move and adjust some for so, um, additional information. Okay, now let's go. So the first one, provision, the following information has been extracted from the books of Adam Limited on 1st April 2018. The provision for bad debt was 5,830. So that's provision for bad debt. So we try to locate provision for bad debt ledger. And that's the second ledger on the what? We have the answer, the material sent to you, have the uh, solution there. So we have that. So we click on provision for bad debt. Now the question is, is it a credit item or a debit item? As I said, provision is what? Is a credit item, is a credit item. So we create that. So we have the opening balance. Opening balance, what is the figure given to us for opening balance? We have 5,000 and what? 830. Now there is a discount allowed. So we have, 2,234. This is the figure I'm picking. 2,000. And you see it? Provision for bad debt. That's what? 2,234. Now, when you are done with that, the next thing now for us to what? To not trade this one as well, which is provision for discount allow. We need to trade that. The provision for discount allow. So how do we do that? So we come down here. 
you scroll down to you locate that okay this is it so then you come credit side that's our opening figure as well opening balance to be what um let's go please if you have your uh, a laptop and a phone there so you are using the laptop to project this lecture you can use your phone as what as a textbook so you have your question instead of us throwing up and down it will be very easier so i'm going to pick up my own um second gadget and i'm going to look at the question from there so from the question i have what my opening stock to be five thousand Five thousand and what? I have it to be five thousand and eight thirty. Five thousand and eight thirty. That is my opening balance. So now I'm done with that, and I look here. What is the next thing to do? I'll look at the question given to me. I will ask the question. Question. I'll say the question, what are the other information given to me that I need to use? Then I'll go on. Then I say discounts, discounts allowed during the year to 31st March is what? 2019, and that is the discount allowed. It means I need to enter this information. So what did I do? What is the double entry for that? I need to know the two accounts that will be involved. The first account is the discount allowed account to be involved. And the second account is what? Is it trade receivables account? Is it trade receivables account? Because we are going to use it to reduce the figure that we have in our trade receivables account. So let's go on and reduce that. So let's do that. Let's post. So we come down here. And what is the figure? The figure says uh, 18,824. 18, so we come down right here. We have this account kind of allow. This kind of allow is an expenses account. So it's have what it have a debit uh entry. It's an expense account. So what we have, so we have trade receivables. What is the amount? We have 18,000. Eight two four. That's the amount that we are. Then we need to do the second leg. What is the second leg? We go to the trade receivables. We go to the trade receivables. Then we put that to be what trade uh discount allowed. And that's eighteen eight two four. So we add that to be what eighteen thousand. 824 so we are done with that for now so now we move on to what to the next one says that i'm bad debt written off was 4832 bad debt written off so it means and bad debt is what is an expense account because the balancing with what the, the balance figure will be taken to the profit or loss account so we have that so bad debt where is the second leg to account that involved here? The bad debt and the trade receivables account are involved. So we have our trade receivables. What is the amount of that? We have it to be what? 4,832. 4,832. So the second leg we will be found under the trade receivables on the credit side. On the credit side. And that will give us bad debt to be four thousand eight thirty two. Now that we have this, let's now we have done we have done on the double entry. You know, like I said, that our account here is all about what double leg dual concept. You know what? Whenever there's a giver, there will be a receiver. Okay, so let's see. So on 31st March 2019, the debtors amount to what? 425,052. So we have, so we come down here, as there we come down here. So they give us the value of the debtor. So which is what? Trade receivables. So we have a balance, but we have it here. Now we have it here. So we have trade receivables. Whenever they uh, make sales, what do you do? You credit your sales and what when they enter they make uh credit sales. 
what you do is you credit your sales account and you debit your trade receivables account. So under here, we are going to have um, what you call sales, credit sales, credit sales, we're going to have credit sales. And what is the figure given to us in credit sales? If you look at it, we have four two five. 052 and the second leg will be fine under what under the saves account so we are not opening saves account yet so that's why the second leg will not be posted now the provision for bad debt is to be based on a specific provision of 5020 now i told that okay there will be at the end of the day now we are now making what provision now right, what the provision that i'm making here is 5052 that's the provision that i'm making and a general provision on the remainder at what one percent so on the remainder it means that the trade receivable control account minus the bad debt minus the discount allow minus the specific provision then you now find one percent of the result to now give you the what to now give you the total amount of provision that you are making in year 2019 so because of that, uh, let me do a, cal a brief calculation here. Um, let's see. Okay, let's see. Let's do a brief calcul calculation. Now we are calculating our provision for what? Provision for that full that full debt for 2019. So these workings, I'm just this is my workings. Workings. Now, so I'll ask myself, I ask specific. Provision. And that specific is what is five thousand. Let me have them check it. Here. I have that to be five thousand and what fifty two. Yes, that's five thousand and fifty two. Correct. So and we have general as well. General provision. Now the general provision is expected to be. 1% on what? On the remaining balance. Now, before we can do this, because we, before we can do this provision, we need to know the balance of our trade receivables account. So we go to our trade receivables account to balance it up. Now, look at the left hand side. The debit side have 425,052, while the right hand side, which is the credit side, have uh, 18,820 plus 4,800. So we I'll calculate that you give us 20,000, which means the left, uh, the uh, right hand side is lower. Sorry, excuse me, is lower than the what than the left hand side. So what do you do? You add it up. So pick your calculator, like I'm doing. So pick 18,824 plus 4,832. That will give us 23,656. Then do minus 425052 which means the figure on the what on the debit side and that will give us 401396 so we have our closing balance our closing balance will be what um okay our closing balance will now be 401396 then we come here and put what uh okay i think there's a higher here yeah. okay mm. okay now let's go um so i'll put my closing balance there i put my closing balance there Uh, 401 396. Now, once I have that, I will now add together. If I add together, that will be 425 is 052. 
Now, if I come back here, so I have 425, it's What I've done is I've balanced my trade receivables account because I need that closing figure. I need that closing figure. So I've done the work, I've balanced it at the moment. So I'll come down to my workings position. Let's give this more space. So I'll come back to my position. I have this. So I have my balance, which is four, two, five. 052. No, sorry. 4 is 396. I'm picking this balance. I'm picking my closing balance to be 4 is 395. So now after I've picked that, I need to reduce it by my own, my specific power provision. I need to reduce it by that. Then after I've reduced it, I cannot multiply it by my 1%. Now, if you press your calculator on that, what is it going to give you? It's going to be 401396 minus 5052 times 1%. And that will give us, that will give us 3963, three, approximating to that. So that, that's what it's going to give us. It means that our total, our total provision for our total provision for 219 will now be addition of these two. I will add it together to give us what plus 5052. That'll give us 9015. So that's what it's going to be. That's our total what our total provision for 219. That's our total provision for 219. Now if we have 9012, now let's Look up here. Let's look at what we have. Our opening figure. Our opening figure says is we have to, here under our provision for bad debts. Our opening figure is saying we have two thousand two hundred thirty-four. But what we need, what we need to reduce our trade, then what we need to reduce our trade receivables is nine thousand and fifteen. Nine thousand and fifteen. So for us to do that, it means that there will be an increase. Our opening balance is 2,234. But what we make and what, what we put, the provision that we are expected to make at the end of the year is 9,015. So what we're going to do here, we're going to find the difference between these two. Is the difference that we're going to post to our expense account, which is what? Bad debt. So that is that difference that we're going to post to our, what, our bad debt that is going to take into the profit or loss account. Please, I'm repeating myself. Is the difference between the, the opening and the closing that will determine if, the, if there's an increase or decrease? And is that difference that will be taken to the expense account, which is what? Bad, um, bad debt. Or you can create another account called provision for that for debt account, posted straight to work, to profit or loss account. Okay, but for this, this one is easier. Just do what? Just skip two account. Bad debt and doubtful debt account. Bad debt, bad and doubtful debt, and provision for bad debt account. Now, after we have acknowledged that, so we have expense accounts here. So we can put bad debt, bad debt expense account. And the difference now is this. So 9,000, so we have 9,015 minus 2,234, we give us 6,781. We give us 6,781. That is the figure that will not be taken because that is the first leg. The second leg would be found in our what? In our bad debt. So let's call this bad and So it will find under our bad and that's with debt accounts. So we have this to be a provision, provision of bad debt. And that will be what, 6,081. Now, we have, we, are, we have done with that. We are done with that. So under one given to us is that they say that 
The provision for discount allow is to be 22%. So we need to calculate our what? Our provision for discount allowed as well. So we come down here again to our formula. So we have it here. So let's let's do this again. So we have provision for so we have provision for what that to sorry discount allowed. Like I explained earlier, that the, the reason why we have discount allowed is because at the end of the year, we know that there are some people that will still take what take advantage of the discount that will pay earlier before it lapses. So we have discount allowed. Then what you need, that need to do is what is trade net trade. We have net trade. So we have net trade receivables. Receivables, okay. Receivables accounts. Now, what the figure that I'm going to need here is this. You know, I explained earlier, but let us use figure to explain now so that it's be clearer. I explained earlier that it will be what? 401, which is your closing balance, 396, minus your specific provision, which is 5,052, minus your what? Your general provision, which is 3,963. Then that will give us what? So let's that will give us let's press calculator. Let's see. So that will, that will gonna give us four zero one three nine six minus four zero one three nine six minus uh addition of those two will give us nine zero one five and that will give us thirty nine three hundred and ninety two thousand three eighty one. Now that we have uh, this figure, then in the way now what we now do percentage. So we have percentage, percentage of 2%. The percentage of that 2% will now give us what? That's times 0 0.02. That give us 7847, approximately to 8. Can you see that? So that will be our what? That will be our provision for discount allowed. So that percent of the percentage, two percent. Let me write it out. So I have two percent of what three nine two three eight one equals. So that was this figure is what we are going to take to our uh provision for discount allowed. So we go to our provision for discount allowed figure. Now looking at it here, our opening figure is what five thousand. 830. But what we are calculated that will be per, per percentage at the end of the period is 7,848. It means that there, there have been an increase in our provision for discount allowed when compared to last year and this year. So that in, the increase is what we are going to what we are going to account for it there. So we go for you now see 7,848 minus 5,000. 830. The difference is what? 2018. So we have two, we have put, okay. So we have our discount, our discount allowed. Because that's the ledger that's going to receive it, the expense ledger of what? That's 2000 now, what is 018. It is the increase that will be posted there. Then we do what? We go to the discount. Then we put what, what we call the provision. Provision. Provision there. So when we have the provision, the next thing for us to now pull our figure. What is our figure? Our figure is 2000 is 018. When you have 2018, then we are done with that. So the next thing for us to now to what? To now close our ledgers. So we need to close.
our ledger. So we co come back here, our bad debt. What do we have our bad debt? Now, like I said, this bad debt, it will be written off to our profit or loss account. It will not have balance carry that because it's at the end of the year. But assuming it's on, uh, maybe in January and we are still going to operate for the rest of the year, it will have balance carry down. But so far, it's at the end of the, it's a, it's a year adjustment, then it will work. It will be written to our profit or loss account. And that figure will be what? Addition of the two. If we add 4,832 4, plus 6,781, that will give us 11,613. 11, so to balance this, it will be what? 11, So the two sides are what? And uh, equal the two sides are not uh, equal. Okay. So now that we have two sides to be equal, then the next thing is for us to now come to a provision for bad debt. Now, provision for bad debt, we have balance uh, or closing balance. It will have closing balance. Closing balance because it will be all we need the the opening balance for the next period. So it will be closing balance because we need it just like we have opening balance there that's the reason we are having closing balance now the addition of the two together which is 2234 plus 6781 will give us a total of 9015 so our total year will now be what 9015 year also will be what 9015 we have closed that ledger then we move to our discount allow our discount allow is what is an expense account. So you close the account to what profit or loss account. Profit or loss account. Now that we have that, they are learning to add it together. So the addition of 18,824 plus 2018 will give us what? They give us what we call 20,842. Even if you press the calculator, that's what we're going to give you. So that will give you what, 20,000. Please, if you are having different figure, send the chart. I will go through the chart and I will what? I will acknowledge it. I will answer your question at the end of the class. Please, any question, you can just go to the, the uh, drop a chat. I will attend to it at the end of the class. So now we are done with your discount allow. Then the next thing is to now close our provision. Provision account will now be closing balance. It will not be what? It's not be written to profit or loss account. You now have closing balance. Now, under the closing balance, what you are going to have is the addition of 5,830 plus 20, 20, oh, 2018. Now, if you press the calculator there, it will give you the one, the initial calculation that we have done under our workings, which is what? 7,000. 848, 7,848. So we come back here and put 7,848. We have here to put 7,848. So then we have, we have closed our trade account because we needed the balance to calculate our uh, provision. So once we are done with that, the other thing that we need to do is that we expect to show how this figure will be what will be displayed on our statement of financial position. We expect to show an extra. That is the fifth one given to us now. Now, please don't forget that statement of financial position is formally known as what as balance sheet. And I said that the provisions we know will not be used. If you notice it, on our trade receivable accounts, on our trade receivable accounts. We didn't put any provision on the what on the credit side because it is expected to show under our financial position. So what I'm going to have here is go. We're going to have our trade receivables, trade receivables, and that will be what we are going to put down the closing balance because this is an extract. It means that the way it's going to look, what I'm going to post to your financial position. So we have our closing balance is four zero one. 396. 401, 396. 4, sorry, 401, 396. Okay, now the next thing we have to work to now put provision. We need to put provision for 
doubtful debt or allowance for doubtful debt. So the provision that we have, if you look at the uh, provision for, if we, if we screw up under provision for bad debt, if you look at it here, under provision for bad debt, our closing balance is the figure that we are going to use. This is our closing balance, is the figure that we are going to pick. We are not going to pick this balance, so please, we are not going to pick this 6,781 balance. I believe you are with me. So what the balance you are going to pick is what? It's 9,015. So we could scroll down here and put 9,015. So you come back here and put what? That negative. Jacket means negative. 9,015. Jacket means negative. Then you come down here and put your provision. You need to remove your provision for what? For discount allowed. Like I said, if you look at some many textbooks, you not see discount allowed there. But for complete understanding, you have, I'm including that for you. So that's what? That's 7,848. If you look, if you check here, can you see it here? Under that, what? Under this, that's what? That's 7,848. And that also will be what? Will be in Yaket. That will be in Yaket. So the balancing figure, if you do 4,401, 401, 3,396 minus 9,015 minus 7,848. That should give you a total of... Okay, that will give you a total of 384. 384-533. That will give us what? 384-533. Then once they are done with that, it means the what? You have answered the question. Please, this can be tested in your examination. This can be tested in your examination. So, these are the workings that you have here. So, you have your workings and you have your account. So, you are good to go on that account. You are good to go, go on the account. So, now let's look at the another question. Question two. Question two. To drive home our point. So, let's look at question two. Uh, Umaru Nore has been in business for several years, dealing in the sales of second hand clothes. In the sales of second hand clothes, okay. In the sales of second, sorry, okay. So, during the Three years ended 31st October 2019. It presented the following information relating to debtors. So they now gave us information relating to debtors. Okay, so we have debtors, including bad debts. Inside that debtors, we have bad debt there. Okay. Okay. So we have that. So we have 31st October 2017 to be 4.5 million and the bad debt to be 1.2. The table remain the same. So you are required to show the above information for the year ended 31st October 2017, 2018, and 2019 in the following account. So I expect to show that in the following account. Now, trade receivable account. We expect to be able to prepare trade receivable account. Another one also is what is bad debt. Another one also is statement of profit or loss account extract. These are the two accounts that you are required to prepare in line with this question, in line with the question. So what we do is you move down. Let's create our trade receivables control account first. Mm. Okay. So we have our trade receivables account. Now we have our debtors, our balance, our figure, our credit saves. We have that to be what, to be 4.5. Now, so we, if a debit item, trade receivables is a, is a current item, a current I, I, uh, uh, class, it falls under current asset class. So it have debit entry, it have debit entry. So we have that to be, uh, mm, so we have that to be credit sales, credit sales. And that is what, 4,000, 4, 4,500,000, 4, 4, 4.5. Now that we have that, so 
sorry, that should be year. Let's start with the year first. So we have year 2017. Okay, so on year 2017, we are talking about the uh credit sales, credit sales of what four five. That's a million piece. So after that, we now have bad debt. And say so bad debt is used to what to reduce our what our trade is able. So we have our bad debt. So we will be on the credit side. So we have bad debt, bad debt, and that will be what. 1.2 because it's included. As mean it's not included, it means they have, they have the, uh, deducted it. But since it's included, we have to what we have to remove it. So we have 1,200 because that money will not be what will not be collectible. It's not collectible again. So after we have that, we have to do the second leg, the bad debt second leg. So we have to come the year and put what the year 2017. So bad debt now we have. Credited our trade receivable account, so we are going to debit our bad debt because it's an expense account. So we have trade receivables, receivables. So that will be what that will be one point. That's one point two. So we are done with that. So that is the entry that we expect to pass. So the following one is now to close it. Now, how do we close it? So let's come to our trade fees. We are payables, receivables. Okay, what is the difference between 4.5 and 4.2? The difference should give us 3.3. Um, yeah, if you press the calculator, it should be 3.3. Yeah, 3.3. So we have our closing balance here. Yeah. Our balance will be 3. 3. So addition of these two, we bought four, five. So we have closed the account for what? Under the trade receivables for year 2017. So we come to the what? The bad debt. The bad debt is always closed to which year? It's always closed to uh, profit or loss account. It's always closed to profit or loss account. So if we look here, we have 1.2. And the reason why you are seeing double column is that nothing else should be added. You know, X can be added to that figure. Now, if they have closed it for the year, so we now want to do for what? For year one, want to do for year 2018. You want to do for year 2018. Your closing balance here, which is a what? Your closing balance here will not be your opening balance. If you are, if you, if you are sleeping with ten thousand, the following day you wake up with ten thousand. That ten thousand will be what will be the starting amount that you are going to use for that day. So the closing balance of yesterday of last year will be the opening balance for the next year. So we have that to be what to be a uh, figure closing balance and that to be opening balance here in year two. And that will be what three thousand. Yeah, that was that. So. But your bad debt will not have what opening balance because an expense account as the, the amount that they written off to your what to your profit. Oh, sorry, we expect to prepare that. Okay, let me let me close the year and so So let's scroll down. I, I, I think I think I have forgotten. Okay, so you are expected to prepare for this one as well. So this one we come here and put um year. So we have year. 2017. So for this year 2017 now, we what the bad debt, we expense it. It's under the expense account. So bad debt. That's the second left for it. We put it what one, two. I'm using vertical format here, not T format. So please don't miss it up. This is vertical format. Or if it's under T format, it should be found on my what on my debit column because it's an extra. So we are what is it's good to go yet. Yeah. So for it to be clearer, I can put something like expenses here yeah. expenses column now now that we are done with that the second year now says that if you look at the question the second year says the debt total is 18 million two hundred and fifty thousand including of what there the bad debt of 2.5 so now we have our bad debt so we come here and put our bad debt under our trade is available bad debt and bad debt to be what uh, that day is set to be 2.5, so we have 2.5.
we have 2.5. Now, if you look at our second year, we have to come back to our what our bad debt to do the second leg. So we have to come out and do part uh, second leg for this one. And that uh, will be uh, yeah, 2018. So that will be trade receivables. Now, that's what the amount for that is 2.5. So we have 2.5 here. So when you are done with that, then the next thing is for, for us to now look at figure. Okay, looking at it now, they give us a value of what? 18 million, 18.250 million. Now, the next thing for us to do is to now find the difference. If they remove 2.5, which is the bad debt, this bad debt here, which is 2.5, they remove it from 18 million, 250,000. The balancing figure will be our what? Our closing balance. It means that our debt minus our bad debt will give us our closing balance. Now, if you do that, then what are you going to get there? So we have our closing balance, which means is the amount that we're going to get our closing balance. So we have our closing balance. Our closing balance will be 18. 250 or uh, no space okay no space okay that's it will be 18 just from the question 18 million 250 thousand minus 25 and that should give us if we press the calculator that should give us um let me see oh sorry sorry i'm looking at another question i'm looking at question three Oh, sorry. I was looking at question three. Sorry, sorry about that, please. Oh, sorry. Oh, I believe we are lost there. So this bad debt is what? Is three million, three eight fifty. I was looking at question three. I lost track there. Okay. Why this one also will be? Uh, that will also be three eight fifty. So now, if you close your closing balance, this figure minus 8.750 will give us a total value of what? Of 4 million 900. Or 4 million 900. Now, if you have gotten that of 4 million 900, so you come back here and say, okay, if what will be our balancing figure, your balancing figure will now be your what? Your credit sales. Please, it can ask you to what? To balance, to what? To get the figure. So this one is the what your balance figure. These are your, your balance figure. So your balance figure is what we call the the addition of these two will give us some um, eight point seven fifty minus three thousand minus three million three hundred thousand. That will give us a total of five million four fifty thousand. In addition, now let's close that. It will give us what eight million seven fifty thousand. Eight million some fifty thousand. So we come to uh, the bad debt as well. We write it off to the profit or loss account, and that amount is what we know as three eight fifty. So after that as well, you move to your profit or loss account so that we can recognize that year. Uh, yeah, 2018 bad debt. That's the bad bad debt, and the amount is three million eight fifty. Okay, so after that, we now move to our the closing balance for this one. We be our opening balance for what for the other one. So we have this to be year 2019. You have opening figure, opening balance. What is our opening balance here? Yeah, opening balance is uh, our 4 million 900. That's our, that our opening balance. Oh, okay. Mm. 
Mm. Okay, so we need more rules here. Okay, we need more rules here. Okay. Mm. Oh. Yeah. Okay, then let's back this up. Let's back this up. So the figure is four nine million. So for that, for so the bad debt for the year, year 2019, the bad debt for 2019 will be if you look at our question, the bad debt is 6.3 million. 6.3 million. So we have we come down here under our bad debt account. So we put this, uh, so we have here, yeah, so we have here yeah, 2019. So after 2019, we come here and put what? Trade receivables. And the amount is what? 6.3. So we put your 6.3 here. After you put your 6.3 here, you need to close the account. So the difference, what is giving to us is 12.200. So now we have our closing figure here, our closing balance, our closing balance. It will now be on the 2.2 minus 6.3. If you press your calculator, that should give you 5.9, 5.9. So you have your 5.9 here, then the figure here, will be our credit sales for what, for 2019. Uh, our credit says, our credit says, as soon as they give us bank, the total amount of money that we received on the credit says, it will be, it will be on the credit side to reduce the credit sales. But since we don't have information about the bank, so we have that as well as credit sales. And that's our balancing figure. So we have that to be what our balancing figure. And that will be total sum of, if we press the calculator, I'll give you 7.3, 7.3. So the addition of it will give us what? It will give us 12,200. That is the initial debt was given to us. We put that to be what? 12,200. After we have that 12,200, we then come back, we close our what? Our, bank, uh, our debt here. We close it. So let's close this. Why is it here? So let's close that. So this one will be what? Uh, six three. Six three. So closing into profit or loss account. And that will be six three as well. So after that, we have closed, we have successfully closed that. We move to the uh, profit or loss account. You have the year uh, that statement for profit or loss account or income statement. So we have the year 19 bad debt to so use to reduce our profit, and we have that to be 6,300. So these are these, these are what we expect to know for our uh, bad debt, provision for bad debt, and also provision for discount allowed. Remember, we have done the treatment for discount allowed. So we have done. We have also done in last class. We did, uh, I think, two classes or three classes ago. We did provision for um, provision for no. So we did uh, discounts allowed treatment. So this time we are doing provision for discounts allowed. So now I will give an, uh, an assignment to that. So we need you need to solve question three and question four so that you can practice it. I know if you're on the good if you're on the track if you're on the track so now let's move on to the accruals and pay payment accruals and pay payment so accruals what do you understand by accruals so we are moving to accrual and pay payment so what do you understand by accrual and what do you understand by pay payment you know um we mock or uh, when we started the class i explained that we have three bases in which we prepare financial statement I said we have what we call the accrual basis, we have the cash basis, and we have the breakup basis. And I explain these three bases. 
that the cash basis is actually what is the basis that allows transactions to be recorded in a financial statement where revenue are received and when expenditure is being paid. That's what that's cash basis. It means that whenever there is no movement of cash, such transaction will not be recorded or be found under our financial statement. Then I said that accrual basis. Accrual basis is the basis that is used to record financial statements when revenue are what are earned and when expenditure are incurred and not when revenue are received and expenditure paid. It means that it gives rooms for credit facility, but it also makes use of what called the matching ma matching concept. The matching concept means that what that the revenue expenses should be matched against the related revenue, even though payments have not been made in that, in that point in time. But it should be the expenses should be matched against the related revenue in order for us to know if we are actually getting making profit or we are not making profit. Then I explain the breakup as well. The, the breakup is actually what is the one that is used to prepare financial statement for a company that 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 is uh, that is future is unforeseeable. It means that it's existent might not be existent in a foreseeable future. That's when we use breakup basis. So now accrual basis. Now this accrual and payment actually what works in line with accrual basis, and also it gives rooms for what we call the matching concept and the potency concept. It means that it's possible for me to actually earn uh, maybe salary, or for example. You, someone is working for you, and at the end of the month, you have not make you are not giving that person a salary. That person actually is due to be paid. So, but you have not paid the person. If for, for that month, you expect to actually what expense the salary. You expect to have uh, expense salary. At the same time, you now have liability. You know, we explained in also in previous class when we mentioned the element of the financial statement. So the link between the expenses and the liability is that. It has not been paid for, but it has been calculated as well. It has been captured as expense in the statement of a profit or loss account. But because it's an obligation as a result of past events in which the settlement will lead to an outflow of economic resources, that is why it's not class classified as a liability under the statement of financial position. So now this actually was, so let's go back to the concept of accrual. The concept of accrual is based on the premises that incomes are an expenditure are recognized when they are generated or incurred, and not when money is actually received or paid. That's a cooler concept. Now, this is, this is the origin of the present, uh, present of receivables and what, and payables in the midst of ledgers and final accounts. So whenever you're hearing what receivables and payables, it means that their respective legs have been captured in the statement of what, Profit or loss accounts. So we now we are making what we are making an adjustment for it. Example is this: is rent. Rent is we are, if you are paying your rent in arrears. That after you have enjoyed the, your rent is when you make payment for. It means that you must have a liability to hold that you have enjoyed a resources or a benefit for your year to pay for it. Interest. So whenever you have interest as well as accrued. It means that you have gathered the money, the money that you have enjoyed, the resources that you have enjoyed, the value that you have enjoyed, but you have not paid for. It has accrued. You gather it, you accrued it over time, then you subject to payment. You accrued it over time, subject to payment. That's accrual basis. That's what we call the concept of accrual. Then we now have concept of payment. Concept of payment is the sense that you have paid in advance. For example, you are what? Let me say for a rent. Let's use the rent as well. For example, you have paid rent in advance. You pay rent for one year. And out of that one year, we have only enjoyed six months. It means that what? That many six months can will now be fine under your statement of profit or loss. It will be fine under your current asset as what? As payment. As what? Rent be paid or rent paid advance or advance rent. It will be found under the current, what the current asset. It means that this value you have paid for you, but you are yet to enjoy the value. And that one that you need to know is what we call the on end income and end income. On end income, it means that you have paid you the service 
but you are here to render the service to them. They have paid the money, but you are here to render the service to them that you have on that's all on end income. As the example of on end income, I'm a renter. What I'm, I'm I'm actually what I'm a renter person. I give out my assets to you. So now that asset is expected to be with. Yeah, it's very wrong for me to work to classify that as end because I've not yet able to render the service to you. I've not given you the equipment for you to use it over that two more. So it's an on end income for me. Is a liability because it's subject to to repayment. If you ask for your money that you're no longer interested in the service, it means that I need to pay you that amount of money back. But we have end income. End income is the service that you have rendered, but you are yet to receive on payment for. That is end income. You have earned it, but you are yet to work to receive payment from the uh from the beneficiary. So that's what that's end income. That is a what that's an asset. It's a form of receivables, but we don't qualify receivables because it's other so it was. We call it end income out on or end income. But you might not see it. But in case they ask you the difference between the end income and our end income, I believe you'll be able to what to say one or two things. Now let's look at accounting treatment for accruals. Accounting treatment for accrual is what it's all about income generated but money not yet received will be recorded in the income statement, which is also known as a statement of profit or loss account, just as income received. So I'm going to record it that was that you have, that you have a received, even though you have not received, and will be recorded in the statement of financial position under current asset. Expenses incurred by money but not yet paid will be recorded in the income statement, just as was expenses paid for, and will be recorded in the statement of the current ability. Now, what we are saying is this that Acura be an under the Acura that whenever you have let's pick a worker. Let's pick uh, for example, I'm a staff of a company. And when I'm a staff of a company, I've worked for month of June. But because of COVID-19, they are unable to pay me for that month of June. So when when the accountant is closing, when the accountant is closing the account. So to prepare the management account for the month of June, what they need to do is that they will not expense it. They will uh, salary account. They will debit salary expense account. So they show that okay, this service have been consumed by by the company through me that they have consumed. That I've rendered it to them and they have consumed it, but they are here to pay me. So assuming they have paid me, it's going the second leg is going to credit the bank account. But because they have not paid me, it will not credit my liability account as accrual expenses, salary accrued. That will not be what the title will be. Salary accrued. Because what? They are yet to pay me. And then also is this. You have what? Probably you have enjoyed a services that you have yet to put. You have to pay for. Because they normally bill you every every um, half of year, every six months they bill you. So and you normally close your account, let's say uh, August, August, and you normally close the account on August. So it means that what they have bill you, you need to prorate the amount. First, <clears throat> the first six months, which end in June, have been captured. But June and uh, July, August is captured, but they have not yet paid for it. Because they are here to invoice. Without the invoice, you cannot work, you cannot record. There are some documents. The, the, the document must be present before you can post into your what into your financial statement. If these documents are not present, you cannot post into your financial statement. For example, when it comes to purchase, you need what we call invoice, you need what we call receipt. Also, you need what we call credit note. That if you are returning goods. So another one also is what we have what we call the uh for sales as well. You need what we call the sales, we need what we call the debit note and the rest. These are the, these are the documents that give you go ahead to post into your financial statement. Now for the treatment of that's for the treatment. So let's see, if money is paid on rent, rent pay account is to be debited and cash book credited. That's that word cash is given. 
and the rent paid is what well, will be debited. If money is uh, rent, if money is received or rent, cash book will, well, will be debited and the rent we will receive will be credited. What that do is just the movement between these two items to show for it. Like I said, example earlier on, salary. Now, salary, the first leg, they are here to pay me. Salary account debited, while my uh, accrued salary account credited. One, when they now pay me, what will be the second leg? I will not debit my salary accrued account and not credit my bank account because it's my bank account that is not releasing the money I'm using to settle the salary that I have queued over time. Then we now have what we can now have the payment. The payment, like I said, is our what is it is out if out of the total payment made by the business on an item of expenditure, a portion is more for that accounting period. The portion of the amount paid in advance will be debited from the total before it is taken to what to the income statement. It means that any notice that the money that you are paying for is not for what the uh okay now let's see like i just said i use normally use rent you remember we are doing adjustment we are trying to look at what are the things that we adjust at the end of what at the end of the year when we are done preparing our trial balance what are the things that we need to adjust by raising journal then that when i said okay fine at the end of the year we start a rent i will have not enjoyed the rent so it means that what I cannot calculate the rent I've not enjoyed on, under my statement of profit or loss account. So I will need to place the one I've actually enjoyed that I've paid for, then the rest will now be found under my statement of financial position. So let's look at figures. Let's pick figures to demonstrate that. Exercise on Acura and prepayment accounting. Question one, year one. Who should step? Uh, you should set up in business on 1st January year one. The business has a 31st December year end. So they might close the business at 31st December year end. The business has called a telephone system on 1st February. So that's where they are called the telephone system. Telephone uh, charges are paid every three, three months. Telephone charges are paid every three, three months. So which means the provider allow them to enjoy the service on pay for three months. After three months, they invoice them, then they now make payment. Okay, so year one, so sorry, in year one as follows, the next invoice at the end of year two is expected to be, pre, uh, that should be year one, this. So let me see. Mm. Okay, year one. Okay, the next invoice that at the end of year uh or the end of January, okay, January year two is expected to be what to be nine thousand. So which means that what that's the next time in January. No, they are paying three, three, three months after October. They have invoiced them. So we have November, December, January. So at the end of January, they will give them another invoice for them to pay. And you know, January is another way, another financial year on its own entirely. So how do we calculate for that? So Let's read for that. In year two, the telephone invoice as follows. So 31st January, 9,000. 30 April, 95. July as well, 10,000. 31st October, 10,000. Calculate the accrual amount and show the accounting treatment. So you expect to calculate the accrual amount and show the what? And show the accounting treatment. Like I said, please, you need to what? You need the question. So now let's, let's go to the question. And uh, let's try to solve that question one. Question one. Question one. Okay. Now let's look at this. So we have year one. So we have year one here. Year one. What are the things that we have in year one? So in the month of, if you check it, in the month of April, that is when they invoice them. So we and when they invoice them, who pays the bank pays? So we credit the bank. Who receive the telephone expenses receive? Oh, so we debit the telephone expense account. So we put bank here. How much they invoice us? The invoice us the value of five thousand naira. Now for year one, 
The second one is what in the month of July, 31st July. In 31st July, the invoice was 75, which we have enjoyed as well. So bank as well pays for what? For that 75. So we have what 75. For uh the uh October, October as well, they gave us what the under one bank also paid for another one, which is what 8,500. Now for now October, the next bill was bought in what January year two, year two. But they have enjoyed the value, they have enjoyed the service of that telephone in what in November and December, which is in year one. So then the question is, we need to calculate that so that we can have a reasonable word, a representative figure that will show the total telephone expenses that we have incurred because we use that telephone expenses. To what to generate revenue and because of the matching concept we need to match the revenue against the what related expenses or we match the uh, expenses against the related revenue so how do we do this we now have to operate the accrue more you are the accrue figure we have to operate it for example now we have november december we have november we have December, we have January, that's three months. Now they have enjoyed November, December. So we need to calculate that. And the invoice will come in what? In January. And the invoice that will come in January is what? It's 9,000 Naira. So, so far the invoice will now come in January to be 9,000 Naira. Then we need to pull it down 9,000 Naira. So three months makes 9,000 Naira. And then we are trying to look for two months. It will now be what? Two divided by three. That's two months divided by the three months. Times nine thousand naira. We now take us what? We now be the accrued figure. Akura figure here to be what? So let's sorry, let's back it up. Okay, so we now be two third times nine thousand. Nine thousand. The nine thousand I'm talking about is this. Let me show you the nine thousand I'm talking about. This. This is the method I'm talking about. Because it's what is going to be issued to us at the end of January. That's when going to issue it to us. So that's what we have it to, we have there to do what to be 9,000. So we come back here and put is calculate the press of calculator 2 divided by 3. 2 divided by 3 times 9,000. That gives us 6,000. It means that the value of what they have enjoyed is 6,000 for the year. So we now add everything together. So uh, adding everything together, that will give us what? 27,000. Then we need to close what? Uh, then let's close this. This will be what closing. So if we close, you are closing to profit because of expense. So you are putting the profit or less account. So we close it to profit or loss account. And that will be what? That will be 27,000. And we have it here to be what? This one will now be 27,000, okay? So we are good to go. So, but the now, we need to do the second level for, for Akura. Now, the account, we have bank, 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 but we didn't open bank account. That's why we are not doing the second level. We are just saying that the, with the second level, we go to bank. But now, the, we have Akura accounts now. So we need to show what we are is going to take place under the Akura account. So we come to Akura account. And Put year, year one. So you put year one. After you put year one, the next thing for us is what? We put year one. After I put year one, then we need to go to uh, the debit. We have debited the telephone expenses. We credit, we now credit the Accra basis. And what do we credit it with? We credit it and we say it is telephone expenses. So there, let's do that to what? To be tele or telephone expenses. So we write that, we type that to the telephone expenses. So this, that will be what? That would be a uh, telephone. Mm. Telephone expenses. 
and the figure we got six thousand. So it means that this six thousand have not been paid for, but we have enjoyed it in year one. So we now have balance because it's a by liability. So we have closing balance here. To be what? To be six thousand error. So we have this one will now be what six thousand error. This will also be what six thousand error. After that. We now move to year, year two. What is year two saying? Year two saying that the uh, January, and now the uh, 31st January, we now make payment of 9,000. So we didn't make payment of 3,000. We made payment of 9,000. So what we need to do in the beginning of year two, so we come back here and put year two. Let's put year two here. So we put year two here. In the beginning of year two, the first thing that we need to do is to, to reverse back. The accrual basis, we need to take it back to the expense account so that it will, it will be appropriately accounted for. So that this is that's the start of error will be what will be showed. Because what I'm going to do, for example, now we make payment of, of 10,000. This will be actually will not be bank. Bank of what? We're not paying what we need 9,000 9, payment. But at that moment, that 9,000 error is not what? It's not the expenses. It's not for year two alone. Part of year one is what is there. So for us to reduce it, and the part of year one that is there is what is 6,000. So for us to reduce it, we need to now come here and put what we call, let's on the accrual basis, or year, year two. So we have this to be opening account, opening balance. That we are just copying down the figure that is 6,000. So we 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 take this six thousand, this thousand under our crew, we take it back to the telephone expenses account. We take it back to the telephone expenses account. So we now have what we call we have our telephone expenses account here. Telephone expense account. So the word what that expense account is what is reverse. We are reversing it, okay? And the amount is worth 6,000. That's what we are reversing. We are taking it away from the Akura back to the telephone expenses. So we now have it to be what? Aku bracket what? Reverse. Uh, And that's six thousand. So, so what we have done here is that we have used that six thousand error minus nine thousand error. I've net it off that the actual amount of money that we, the actual amount of value of telephone that we enjoy in year two in the month of January is just three thousand error. That's what we have done. So we have used it to what to reduce it down to what down to down. So what we only enjoy is what is three thousand because nine thousand minus six thousand will give us three thousand. Then we cannot continue with what with our bank. So another one we have what we have bank, which is what which is our second payment, and that is what some uh five nine five. So we have that to be nine five. Then after one we have bank, we make another payment in what two months in the month of July to be ten thousand, and we make the last payment in the month of uh October. So we make last payment in the month of October to be what to be ten thousand. Now we have been there, but yet we still have what November, December. So since we have more than November, December, that would be what, that would be our crew, uh, and that would be what we know as that would be two third times ten thousand five hundred. That is the balance that that is the receipt that they will issue to us. And if we calculate, press the calculator on that. That's two divided by three. Two divided by three um times ten thousand five hundred. That give us seven thousand. So we have this to be seven thousand. So if that is seven thousand, addition of all this together, we give us a total of fourteen fourteen thousand five hundred. If I'm correct, sorry, uh, forty five thousand five hundred. Forty five thousand five hundred. Then if that is the case, the credit side is giving us six thousand. So we need to balance it. So how do we balance it? The balance is written to what to profit or loss account. Please don't forget. Because the NDA is written to profit or loss account. So for the 5,000, 
45,500 minus 6,000 will give us 39,500. That will give us 39,500. Now, if we add these two together, it will give us what? 45,500, which is 6,000 plus 39,500. They give us 45,500. Then when you are done with that, we need nothing to close. Then the, uh, the second leg for the Akura. Yeah, no, we have done this Akura here. So we need to do the second leg. So the second leg will be on the curly side of what? Of the Akura. So we have here to do what? To be telephone. That's telephone. Account expenses. And that will be what? 7,000. 7,000. So adding that together will give us what we call uh, 6,000 plus 7,000, that's 13,000. So 30,000 is more than 6,000 that is what that is on the other side. So what we do is that we have 13,000 minus 6,000, we give us 7,000. And that will not be our closing balance. That will not be our closing balance. So it means that if when, you go, when we continue like this, our opening balance in year three, Oh, let's see. Our opening balance in year three will now be 7,000. Will now be what? 7,000. So that's year three. So it goes on like that until we clear it and we no longer owe any amount of money. This Acura, this Acura is what is a liability account. See, this is a liability account. Is found on that statement of financial position. Why this telephone expense account is found on that statement of profit or loss account. So that is a narration on the accrual basis. Now, if you look at the second question, that one talks about the payment. That how do we account for the payment? So the way we account for the payment also is what is similar to what what we did earlier on in the in the accrual basis. Once we understand the concept. Once the concept is clear to us, then we are good to go. Once we understand that, okay, this is the word we expect to post, this is what we expect to post, we will, we are good to go. Now let's look at question two. Question two says that uh, Moses set up in business on 1st January year one, preparing financial assessment to 31st December year each year. On 1st March, he obtains annual insurance on his office building. Starting from what? Starting from first March at cost of twenty four thousand annual annual. That's what that's that's twelve years. So annual at the cost of what twenty four thousand payable annually in advance. So he pays in advance. You have not enjoyed. So you have paid for it that you will be you will enjoy it later. Okay, and he did that in what was first of March. Okay, year two. In year two, the annual insurance payment payable on first of March is thirty thousand. For, for the year. So for no for the year to twenty eighth February year three. Okay, so they are giving a duration for that to so first of March ten thousand towards year two. Now they're asking us to calculate the payment amount to be shown in the accounting treatment. So how do we calculate that? Then first thing that we need to do is we need to know the total amount of money that is paid. So the total amount of money that is paid is 24,000 in year one. So we start by saying year one. We start by saying year one, year one. So bank, bank give all, bank, bank pays 24,000 and we see 24,000. That's it. Now, looking at it now, in the month of March, we normally close our financial statement ending to be what? To be, ending to be normally close it ending to be uh 31st december but we make a march so if you look at march from march to december we give us total of 10 months yeah it will give us a total of 10 months that's what we have what we have done we have enjoyed we have enjoyed 10 months because they pay in what first of march so if that is the case then the next thing for us to do is to what to not prorate it it should not be 10 divided by 12 times 24. That was what, 20,000. It means that the value that they've enjoyed is 20,000. Is that 20,000 now that's going to enter our profit or loss account? The, the balancing figure will not be our prepayment because we are here to enjoy it. So we come here and put what? We put the uh, profit or loss 
account. That was what, 20,000. 20, How did we get that? Uh, okay, let's calculate our prepayment. So we want to calculate our prepayment. Let's see prepayment. So you're going to calculate your prepayment. It means that two divided by what? Two, that's two months that you didn't enjoy, um, that you have paid in the value that's in year two. It will be January and February year two, divided by 12 um, times 24,000. And that will give us 4,000. So addition of these two, we together we got 24,000. And it will balance with what with the other side as well, which is 24,000. Now we have done that. We need to what do the second leg on the payment account. Then how do we do the second leg on the payment account? We are going to put year, year what? Year one. Year one. And under the year one, we have what we have insurance. Because the second leg will be fine there. Insurance expense. And the amount is what? 4,000. Now. Let's close it up again, closing balance. Because it is a live uh, an asset, so it has closing balance. Closing balance to the what to the four thousand. So the closing balance will now be in the opening balance for the what for the following month, for the following year rather. Opening balance for the following year. So we have that year to be forty four thousand. Following year, so we have year two. Let's put year two years. So we have this to be what opening balance or what four thousand. Now, if what that we win, if the first thing for us is that we need to take it out now. We need to take it out from our prepayment account back, we just like the way we do Akura. We took it, we reverse it back. So this one also we must be reversed back. So how do we reverse it back? We reverse it back by putting insurance here, insurance. You credit the uh, the prepayment account by what four four thousand. Then you debit. You debit is you debit that by let's say uh, that's what prepayment prepayment. Um, sorry, that should be year two year two prepayment prepayment. The payment of what four thousand that four thousand now we have written it back so the first next thing for us now do what in year three what are what is the total payment that we make in year three we make a total payment of thirty thousand yeah from the question we make the total payment of thirty thousand now that we have thirty thousand the next thing now okay out of that thirty thousand how many more do we enjoy we enjoy ten months so we didn't enjoy ten uh, two months so the two months also we will, will be taken to the following month so we have that the payment as well so we have the payments and I have now two divided by 12 times how much do we pay? We pay 30,000. Now, if you press the calculator, what will that give you? That's two divided by 12 times 30,000. That gives us 5,000. It means the value that we have not enjoyed, but you have paid is about is 5,000. Then we now have the balancing figure will now be written to profit or loss account. Now, the balancing figure written to profit or loss account will not be the um, this 4,000. The only credit on the on debit side. If you look at the on the debit side, we have four thousand and we have five thousand. The addition of this will give us thirty-four thousand. Now, if you use that the case, then you come to profit or loss account. Now, thirty-four thousand minus five thousand will give us what we call twenty-nine thousand. Now, twenty-nine thousand plus five thousand will give us thirty-four thousand. Now, what we have done is what we have closed the ledger. So we need to close the what the prepayment ledger as well. So the uh prepayment we brought down here. We have that to be what uh, we now have insurance, insurance expenses. If you notice it, anytime I'm doing the second leg, I always repeat the word, the name of the ledger. So because that is the way we can easily trace the second leg back to where it is coming from. And after that, we have our what? We have our closing balance. We have our closing balance. Okay. Um. So we have our closing balance to be what? Closing balance to be. We have our closing balance to be 5,000. Now, if we add them together, it will give us what? 9,000. The other side also will give us 9,000. So it means that we are good to go. It means that will give us 9,000. So 
if one then the next thing for you to do is well just look at it okay this is year three because it's actually what is an asset so it continue it have what carry over so we have that the opening balance will not be what the excuse me the closing balance right now the closing balance will not be opening balance yeah Opening balance here, yeah. an opening balance of what? Opening balance of uh, 5,000. Opening balance of 5,000. So after we have that, so we are good to go for quick question, be able to uh, ask us any time, any particular point in time. So uh, that will be the end of today's lecture. So we can we will continue from there next time. So um, even if you have any question, I have no chat here. So I believe there is no question. I have no chat here. So I believe for any question. Okay, from the last class as well, I have not received any question from the last class, even from the previous class. So I believe that you are you are understanding and you are practicing. It's actually very very important for you to practice because it's not it's not just about you understanding it or solving it alone. It's about you what practicing it and you know how they can trick the question so that whenever they trick the question you'll be able to what to answer it i'm sorry that i spent uh four to five minutes out of the initial time so this will be the end of the today class if you have any question please uh do hesitate to private chat me or call me and i'll be i'll oblige to your what to your request so thank you I want to wish you happy night rest. See you again some other time. Bye.